We are going to dive into this essay from a student called Jimmy. The title was, How Does Dickens Portray Cruelty in A Christmas Carol? Now, the good news for you is that the cruelty will obviously be towards the poor. So this is the same essay as, How Does Dickens Portray the Treatment of the Poor in A Christmas Carol? This is an essay that's going to help you with lots of other essays. You can download the extract in the description if you want to follow along, or you can jump straight into the essay. And it's got that quotation which will be relevant to every single question. If they would rather die, said Scrooge, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. So I'm sure you know about the Malthusian context, but we'll deal with that later. So, into the essay. And the big thanks again to Jimmy for donating it to us. In The Christmas Carol, Dickens presents the cruelty that Scrooge expresses to the poor, the cruelty that society enforces on the lower class children, and the consequence of mistreating the lower classes. Now, the examiner comment is this. This is a three-part thesis explaining three things that Dickens is doing. I recommend that in any essay because it works as an essay plan, and the examiner automatically becomes psychologically predisposed to give you a much higher level. The thesis continues. He wants to criticise selfish employers due to their greed and inhuman treatment of the poor to advocate for a more philanthropic society and to teach the reader of the significant consequences of this mistreatment. So this is an amazing thesis statement. Steal it and use it yourself because these purposes will be relevant whatever the question is. This is where the thesis statement excels, because it gives three points of view that Dickens has. That becomes the essay plan. So, he's probably memorised this, and I encourage you to do the same. Memorise the thesis statement and use it whatever the question, because Dickens' purposes will be the same whatever the exam question is. Now, the other great thing about dealing with the author's purpose is that you deal with context straight off the bat. And so the examiner got this far in the essay and said, right, I'm giving this level four for AO3 context because I can clearly see this student is demonstrating a clear understanding of the context. In A Christmas Carol, Dickens presents the cruelty that Scrooge expresses towards the poor as unfair and inhumane in stave one, when Bob Cratchit is described to be in a dismal little cell. This imagery implies an unpleasant, confined space, suggesting that Scrooge is almost imprisoning his employee. So this is a very good bit of language analysis. The examiner's not giving it a mark for that yet, because we've only had five lines, but notice that this is not the extract. Jimmy has started in a logical place because he's writing a logical argument. He started by asking himself, what is the first significant example of Scrooge's cruelty towards the poor? And if he writes a logical argument, his essay is very likely to be at least level five, which the examiners call thoughtful and developed. Because if you're being logical, you must be being thoughtful. Now, the examiner is going to award some marks after this paragraph. Let's check it out. This mistreatment is further emphasised when Scrooge believes that the poor had better die. So this, remember, came from the extract. The juxtaposition of positivity and death emphasises how Scrooge and other employers at the time did not care about their employees or any other working class individual. Through the use of language and structure, Dickens may be criticising the mistreatment of the poor that employers express, and may also be challenging the Malthusian theory. Perhaps Dickens believed that this corrupt way of thinking was actually the cause of the mistreatment of the poor so as not to increase the surplus population. Moreover, through writing A Christmas Carol as a novella, Dickens may be trying to convey this message to the reader, who was probably an upper-class employer, in order for their viewpoints to change and for better treatment towards the poor being achieved. 
Notice that this section of the paragraph all concentrates on Dickens' purpose. This is a really easy way to get into the top bands. Jimmy knows he's going to be able to write about Malthusian politics, whatever the question, and he knows that he's going to use this quotation because it'll be relevant whatever the question. He's just very lucky that this happens to be in the extract. Well, this has got the examiner excited. There's a lot of context here, and it's all linked to those interpretations of Dickens' viewpoint. So, the examiner has said, yep, that's looking developed to me. I'm giving it level 5 for AO3. Now, although Jimmy has dealt with only two quotations, he's still gaining high marks for AO2. So, let's go and look at everything that was in bold italics, because... These are examples of subject terminology. So the examiner is going to say, I'm giving that a clear and explained use of subject terminology for AO2. Many students think that subject terminology is only about naming techniques, simile, metaphor, personification and the like. But no, subject terminology means what is the specialised vocabulary that any student of literature will need in their essays? whatever the essay might be about. So here, Dickens presents an idea. That is a kind of terminology you would use to talk about the writer's point of view. Presents the cruelty of Scrooge. So the language about themes. All the techniques can be summed up by this word, imagery. So that, too, is subject terminology. Further emphasised, a phrase which you need in order to explain what the writer is up to. Juxtaposition, of course, is a technique like contrast. The use of language and structure, vocabulary that you need in order to explore what a writer is doing. This is something else the writer is doing, trying to convey this message. In stave four, Dickens presents society's cruelty towards lower class children, when the menacing ignorance and want are described to be man's. So we've left the extract really quickly here to go on to points which Jimmy thinks are more important to his argument. He knows he's going to get high marks because he's always writing about the impact on society, which of course links to Dickens' purpose. The placement of the frightening description of ignorance and want near man perhaps could be used to suggest that man is wolfish and menacing. However, Dickens could be implying that man is the cause of the suffering of ignorance and want. Through this use of structure, perhaps Dickens is trying to advocate for a fairer society, there it is again, and may also be criticising the child labour that was common during the 19th century, mainly through the establishments that Scrooge helps to support, Look how he's managed to bring in quotations from the extract to link to a different part of the text. That is a clear way of getting the top grade. The fact that Scrooge is supporting the suffering of the poor emphasises how Victorian society causes children and other poor individuals to suffer. Through being an influential writer at the time, perhaps Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in the novella form as a message to not only the reader, but to society, especially the church and government, to persuade them to rethink how they exploit children and for them to implement new ways that the poor can benefit. So we are also getting a sense here that Jimmy has prepared this paragraph in advance. He knows that it's going to be relevant to nearly any essay he has to write. Another way that we can tell that is he hasn't used the word cruelty, which of course is in the title. Luckily, he's used terms like exploit, which the examiner automatically knows means cruelty. So he hasn't lost marks here, but that's a big clue to us that Jimmy's probably prepared this in advance, knowing that he's going to be able to smoothly fit it into whatever essay he's writing. Even better though, Jimmy, if you use the actual vocabulary of the question as well. So, for example, rethink how they cruelly exploit children. So, although Jimmy does reference suffering, because he isn't explicitly writing about cruelty, the examiner's going to hold off. And so they're saying, yeah, I'm still going to stay at level 5 for AO3. I'm not 
wholly convinced yet because the word convincing is in level six. Okay, so we're going to go back and look at the words that show the examiner this is an exploration, and exploration ends up at level six. You have to have enough of them, in other words, enough ideas that you're exploring, but the quality is going to be level six. So we have words like implies, suggesting, almost, and they're just in the thesis statement. In the main body of the essay, maybe, perhaps, may, perhaps and could, could be implying, perhaps again, may again, another perhaps. And I should have kept account, shouldn't I? But you can see how often Jimmy does this to show the examiner he's exploring. Back to the essay. As a result, Dickens presents the consequences that cruelty to the poor has in stave three when the ghost of Christmas present explains to Scrooge that he foresees a crutch without an owner in a poor chimney corner. The reader can instantly infer that Tiny Tim will die, which the ghost confirms. However, the half rhyme of corner and owner suggests that this prophecy is not set in stone yet. That's quite a sophisticated idea, isn't it? So he's saying, look, we've got this rhyme here, but it's not a full rhyme. So if owner had actually rhymed with corner, then it would form a rhyming couplet with that sort of completed sound, which implies finality. Just check out the last two lines of every scene in the Shakespeare play you're studying, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Anyway, the reason I'm so excited about this idea is I'd never thought of it. I hadn't spotted that half rhyme. This is automatically getting the examiner to think, wow, this is a great essay. Perhaps Dickens uses structure here to teach the reader and society of the significant impacts that their cruelty has on the poor, but also perhaps to assure the reader that not all hope is lost and that there is still time to change. So you've probably wondered what this line is. This is my newsletter and everybody who subscribes for free will get the essay up to this point that we've just read and paid subscribers will be able to get the rest of the essay which you're getting free now in the video. So let's look at the examiner's commentary. Notice that all the way through that paragraph Jimmy has been writing about cruelty. He uses a wide range of quotations as well which crucially he keeps linking to Dickens' purpose. Zooming in on the rhyme of owner and corner is also very convincing, as I've shown you. So although I found that analysis about the rhyme very convincing, you might be thinking, well, why hasn't the examiner given it level six? Instead, the examiner says, I'm giving this analysis of quotation level five. I'm only saying it's thoughtful and developed. Well, it's because the examiner will have a secret number in their heads of how many examples of stuff that's brilliant will I want before I say the whole thing is convincing. So the examiner will keep marking things at level five until that secret number is triggered and then kaboom, level six. So there isn't any extra special level of brilliance. You just need a certain number of them. My prediction is four. Dickens may be suggesting that to change, Society must not only understand their own business, but to also care about other people's. As an allegoric novella, Dickens may be using A Christmas Carol as a way to inform the covetous old sinners that their cruelty does actually have a catastrophic impact on the poor. What a cool trick that was. So these quotations come from the extract, but now this quotation about Scrooge being a covetous old sinner, happened in chapter one, and Jimmy has skillfully used it to describe the readers who Dickens is suggesting are potentially like Scrooge if they don't help the poor. And as a way to teach the cruel Victorian individuals how to change in order for the poor not to suffer. We haven't talked yet about how all the quotations have been embedded, and that simply means that they fit into the sentence and make sense inside the sentence. That's an easy way to get at least level four for clear explanations, but is also much more typical of thoughtful and developed answers. 
So the examiner said, look, there's 13 quotations here. They've all been analysed. I think that's enough for level 6 AO2 analysis of language. But the examiner has another target in their head for how many they want for level 6 AO1 references. So, so far, they're sticking to level 5. Hopefully you've noticed how often Jimmy keeps referring back to society and linking it to the author's purpose. And the examiner's seeing enough instances of this now to say, OK, that is now analysis of level 6 quality for context AO3. Now we have the conclusion. In conclusion, Dickens presents the cruelty that the rich express towards the poor as inhumane and as having severe consequences. However, Dickens suggests that it is not too late to save the poor from suffering and cruelty by achieving a more philanthropic society. Moreover, through presenting no cruelty in stage 5, Dickens may be emphasising that redemption and philanthropy achieve a more positive society where the rich care and look after the poor. So although Jimmy doesn't deal with the ending directly, he is making quite a cool structure point about why there isn't any cruelty in this particular stave. And that also means his conclusion isn't just repeating what was in the rest of the essay. So let's look at the marking. This was only 714 words long, which is incredibly short for a top grade essay. And it leaves us with the A01 criteria for the task. Has Jimmy answered the full task? Has he dealt with the full text? Jimmy's teacher, who was the examiner in this instance, gave the essay 30 out of 30. But I'm going to disagree, because I don't think you can answer the full task about any text without considering the end of the text, or if the character doesn't make it to the end, the end of the character. And that's where the author gives us their final opinion or point of view. So I'm saying here that I'm not fully convinced. You will also notice that an essay under 900 words is unlikely to score full marks. Well, you'll notice it because I'm telling you. Because you haven't got enough words to make enough points to have dealt fully with the whole text. So some other parts of the novel which could easily have been covered are Scrooge's conversion at the end and the poor stealing from Scrooge's corpse. So his cruelty to the poor is mirrored by their cruelty to him. So I've scored the essay at 28 out of 30 marks. Does that mean I'm right? No, it doesn't. AQA allows examiners to disagree four marks either way in a 40 mark question. So a senior examiner could score 36 out of 40 and other examiners would be able to give it 32 or 40 out of 40 and AQA would say, yep, yeah, all those marks are fine. Uh, so that's typical of both question fives. And what it means for a mark out of 30 is that we could have graded this anywhere between 24 and 30 and the senior examiners would have said, yep, yeah, that's okay. Now, Jimmy's teacher and I have both decided on a mark which is in grade 9. Now, if you want to know which ideas will fit nearly every essay on A Christmas Carol in order to get you a grade 9, you want to watch this video appearing now.